I'm uh, Claudia D'Amato from the University of Bari and uh, I'm going to present this uh, position paper that is a joint work with uh, Olga Brill and Luciano Serafini from uh, Fondazione Bruno, Bruno Kessler. The main motivation of this work starts from this mainly an observation that uh, uh, the number of available domain ontologies is increasing over the time in uh, um, available repositories. But in the same time, there is a still a huge amount of data that are stored and managed uh, with the relational uh, database management system. Sometimes uh, these uh, two sources of information may describe the main domain, but complementing, in a way, uh, the view and the knowledge concerning this domain. So our goal is to extract uh, hidden knowledge patterns of, uh, across the heterogeneous data sources. And the way in which we want to do this is by propos proposing a framework for learning association rules from both sources of, of information in an integrated way. Let's start with this uh, very simple, but I think intuitive, motivating example. Let's assume that uh, a knowledge base uh, described being the kingship uh, uh, relationship uh, uh, is available, and uh, this ontology also contains an assertional part. Then an organization has a database concerning, for example, uh, the job, um, job information database uh, that share uh, at least a subset of individuals from the ontology. So if we put these two different sources together that describe two different aspects of a related domain, we may discover something like that women that uh, earn the highest amount of money are not uh, mothers. Where the knowledge of, of being mothers and uh, women come from uh, the, the ontology and information concerning the salary comes from the database. And uh, it is important to note that this information cannot be discovered automatically if uh, the, the two sources of information are analyzed separately. We want to discover such kind of patterns uh, by uh, lear automatically learning association rules from this integrated source of information. So uh, just making things simple, an association rules, an example of association rules, uh, where association rules are generally uh, extracted from large amount of data and generally in propositional representation, is something like this, uh, uh, th this one. Qualification is equal to postdoc and city is equal to Madrid. Then we may uh, infer that the salary is equal to uh, uh, sorry, uh, 25,000 uh, uh, euros. Where qualification, city and salary are the attributes uh, from the database and the, these other are the corresponding value in, uh, in the database that we have considered. Some basic notion, um, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of, of uh, an association <coughs> rules are called uh, item set. It is called uh, the, uh, the frequency of an item set, the number of the matches in the given source of information in the given data set. It is called support, uh, the, frequ the, um, the frequency of the conjunction of the, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the rule. And it is called the confidence of a given association rules, the ratio between uh, the, the support and uh, the frequency of um, the left hand side of the rule. So given this basic, uh, basic uh, assumption, uh, the, usual step, uh, the usual process for learning association rules, uh, again, from a propositional uh, representation uh, uh, considering the state of the art, uh, is, uh, consists mainly in two basic steps. The first one consists in uh, discovering uh, the frequent item set uh, with respect to a given threshold from the, 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 the original data set. And the second step consists in extracting the association rules from the frequent item set uh, given a certain confidence values uh, threshold. I'm not going into the detail of this part because this part is uh, uh, absolutely state of the art. What we want to do is uh, to exploit the state of the art uh, but we want to build uh, an integrated source of information for applying algorithm at the state of the art and then uh, discover this uh, hidden pattern in the data that comes from the two sources of, of information put together. Uh, at this uh, initial sta uh, status, we have considered as a source of information a single table. The, re the, the reason are mainly two. The first one is that uh, in this way we do not have to migrate uh, the, the large amount of data in relational database in new format. And the second one that uh, we can straightforwardly apply state of the art, uh, uh, state of the art, art algorithm. Well, uh, um, the a priori algorithm is uh, one of the most well known. The basic idea consists in uh, building uh, um, a view of the, of the part of the data in which we are interested in. And it is quite simple. So we start with uh, a first uh, entity of interest in which we are interested in and for which uh, uh, we want to extract 
the association rules. This can belong uh, uh, either uh, to the knowledge base, to the, uh, to the ontology, or to, um, it can belong to the database. And we set it as a, the, the first attribute of the table that we want to build. Then we select a, such a subset of attributes that are re related uh, with the first uh, entity, the primary entity of interest from the database. And the corresponding value for, for this set of uh, initial attributes are easily uh, collected by performing an SQL query. Similarly, we can take a concept name from the ontology that are relevant for, 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 what, uh, for, for our task, and we set this concept name as an additional attribute name of the table that we are, uh, that we are building. And this will be a binary attribute in the, tab in the table under construction, where the, the value will be given by the fact that uh, the, the value of the primary entity is an instance of the considered concept, then in this case the value will be one, otherwise it, the value will be zero. Similarly, we, and uh, with a similar process, we can collect uh, um, um, object uh, properties from the ontology and set them as an additional attribute of the table under construction. And in the same way, we can do for the data type properties of the knowledge base, where in this case, the, um, the corresponding value will be the label in, in the ontology that is uh, already asserted or maybe uh, derived. So, Consider uh, again our simple example. Given the, uh, the job information database uh, and uh, the kingship ontology, we may build a, a table like this one, where name is uh, the, um, the primary entity of interest for us. And then we choose as an attribute from the database uh, the, the attribute qualification, salary, age, and city. The corresponding value are the same of the of the initial database, except for the fact that uh, uh, discretization has been performed uh, later on. It is a quite standard process in the data mining, for example. Then, as a concept name from the knowledge base, we choose the concept uh, woman, man, mother, father, child, that we add, add as an attribute name in the table, and we choose uh, as child as a unicorn name in which we are interested in, and we add it, uh, it as an attribute name in the table. Now, let's have a look at how to set the value. So consider the concept woman and the value for the primary entity of interest. We will have that if Alice is an instance of the concept woman, so then we put one as a value. Otherwise, we will, in this second case, we don't, we don't have enough evidence that Robert is instance of the concept woman, so we will put zero as a, as a value. <coughs> Similarly, for the case of object, uh, object property, if we find that Alice uh, and uh, there is another individual that uh, with the Alice are instance of the, of the role uh, as child, then we put one. In this second case, we don't find any individual in the knowledge base that uh, considered with, uh, with Robert are instance of the concept, uh, sorry, the object uh, the property as child, so we will put zero. Once that we have, uh, we have built a table like this one, we can straightforwardly uh, apply the a priori algorithm, for example, and uh, here are some examples of the, the rule that can be extracted from this very simple example. And please consider that uh, usually this method has to be applied to very large data, uh, very large data set, while this is a very, very toy example. But even in this case, we can extract this rule. These are re really extracted uh, from the example that I just shown you. Rule like this one, where we know that if the salary is uh, between uh, 15,000 euros and um, almost uh, uh, 25,000 euros, then uh, the, the, the individuals could, be, uh, could have a, a child and could be instance of a child. Then we may, we may also automatically discover that uh, if uh, an individual is a woman, then is not a man. Uh, it is important to notice that in this case, uh, the confidence value that may, may be uh, interpreted in terms of a uh, probability notion as uh, the probability that uh, if the left, left hand side of a rule holds, then the probability that uh, the right hand side of the rules uh, will occur is equal to the confidence value that is automatically uh, determined. So in this case, we always have 100% as a confidence value, but the main reason is given by the quite high uh, confidence value that we are asking for, considering the very few tuples that we have available. Of course, if we decrease this confidence threshold, we may discover new additional rules with a lower confidence value. So, this represents the kind of rule that we can extract by considering, but merging together a database and an ontology. 
Now, what we can do with these uh, extracted rules? First of all, we can perform data analysis. So, for example, if we go to the rule number three, this rule may suggest it, which is the average um, age uh, of being a parent in the in Madrid area. That would be, for example, different from another area, let's say Bari, for example. Or we may use uh, this rule for performing data completion. For example, the rule number one may be exploited to inductively, inductively assert a new uh, individual that may be instance of the concept child, and we don't know currently this from the, the knowledge base, for example, given a, trans a certain confidence value. Or we may perform ontology enrichment. For example, the axiom number two may be exploited for adding a disjointness axiom that are very few uh, quite often in the available ontology in the ontology that we are considering or these other rules may be uh, exploited for uh, uh, suggesting a possible concept de definition for the concept father for example. So concluding, uh, we are proposing a framework for learning, uh, for automatically discovering uh, association rules from heterogeneous source of information. And uh, of course, since this is a very preliminary work, uh, this has uh, many open issues. Here I collect uh, some of them. First of all, these, uh, uh, these, uh, in, in the current setting, we are mainly uh, assuming a closed world assumption, while this, in this case setting, we should uh, explicitly consider the case of unknown value. Additionally, we are not considering in the case of uh, the, inclusion, um, the inclusion action between concept or between roles, uh, that if we consider them, uh, they, are, uh, they could uh, uh, decrease the computational cost uh, of uh, discovering the rules. Uh, um, then we do not explicitly consider the role filler in the, in the, current, uh, in the current version. And uh, uh, most of all, we could uh, also consider the case of giving a relational representation and uh, extracting our association rules uh, from a multi-relational set. As a future work, first of all, an experimental, an experimental evaluation, then, um, as I said, a multi-relational representation, and we are currently developing a framework for performing, for integrating uh, the association rules that have been extracted uh, during the uh, deductive reasoning process for uh, choosing, uh, um, for giving a deterministic step to the non-deterministic step uh, um, of the Tableau algorithm, such as uh, the, per, the, um, the processing of the disjunction uh, expression between concepts. And if you are interested in this work, we may have a look to the uncertainty reasoning workshop uh, uh, article uh, that will be collocated at uh, ISWC 2012. That's it.